Hello and welcome to today's webinar, the 75% toilet paper rule. I'd like to encourage you that uh, you grab a pen and paper and take as many notes as you possibly can. In my earlier 20s, I used to sell gravestones and in that world there is an interesting story slash joke and it goes like this. This uh, hearse driver, a hearse driver decided he wanted to get a second job to switch things up. So during the day he drove a hearse and at night he would drive a um, he decided to drive Uber. So on his first day, he's going to pick up the person. He picks up the guy, and the guy sits in the back, and as they're driving, not 10 seconds later, the guy in the back taps the driver on the shoulder. The driver just slams on his brakes and screams like, what? And, and the, the, the passenger's like, what's happening? What's going on? And the driver just realized what just happened. He turns out, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You, you got to understand that. During the day, I drive a hearse, and I'm not used to people tapping me on the shoulder. <laughs> the reason I'm sharing this story with you is because today's webinar is that proverbial tap on your shoulder to break your attention and say, hey, focus on this, um, learn this, understand this a little better. I'll go as far as saying that today will be one of the most memorable times you'll have on the internet today. And it's not because of me. It's because of you because of how your mind will think going forward. I like to give an example of a key and what role I'm actually gonna play in your life. I'm not even a key. Say a, a key is used to get into the door. I'm actually not the key that helps you get into somewhere. I'm what they call a key maker. And what a key maker does is they just file the key so that then you can take it and go and use it in a door. The time that I'm in your life is very brief, but if I didn't do my job right, then it makes it harder for you to get where you want to go. In this case, say if you want to go somewhere into a building, you have to take that key and you have to use it to get in. So if I do my job correctly today, you will be a lot better off going forward. So what's this talk about today? The most important first question we all have to answer before doing anything in our life or with our life is what's next? And this question makes or breaks every human being and it will come to us at different times in our life in one of two ways usually. The first way we hear it is vision. What's your vision people will ask you? What do you want out of life? And the second way we hear it is what's your life direction? When we try to answer one before the other, it's like trying to start a car that has no fuel in it. When we try to answer one before the other, it's like trying to put car into gasoline versus putting car on a gasoline. Today, there are gonna be two parts to our experience together. In part one, I'm gonna share a few stories to set up a foundation. In part two, we're gonna dive into a little more information and then go into practice. Defining words. Why is it so important to clearly define our words? Let me give you an example. If I'm talking here and I say, blah, 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 dog, blah, 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 blah. What type and color of dog comes to your mind? For me, it might be a golden retriever, while for you, it might be a pit bull or a black lab, or it might be a dog with some Superman suit. So the whole time, I might be talking about a golden retriever, giving golden retriever examples and all that, while you're thinking, that's not what a pit bull or a lab is like, and you're going to leave completely confused going forward. We're going to define the words, and then we're going to develop the ideas. You might be wondering, why do I talk about picking life direction? What is my motivating reason for this? Why do I dedicate my time and energy towards helping others figure their life direction out? First reason is I personally struggled with this for over a decade and it was very difficult throughout the years trying to figure out a little bit of information here, a little bit there. I didn't have anybody teach me and guide me on how to do this. And over the years, as I learned a little bit by little, as Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking back. So what took me 10 years over the years, I started realizing I could help others achieve in a day, a week, or in a month what took me 10 years. The other reason is because of three phone calls I wish to never get again. One was in 2008 and the other two were 10 minutes apart. And these calls were about three different individuals in my life who struggled with this question. Now, it wasn't the only struggle they had, but it was one of the biggest last struggles that they had I was trying to figure out 
what direction do I take my life? What do I do with my life now? And instead of being able to figure out and having the proper help, they ended up taking their own lives, which leads me to life's 100 rule. Life's 100% rule is that it is 100% able to recycle everything in life. And coming back to me being in the gravestone industry, the cool fact that I learned there is that 75% of us here on planet Earth will see our death coming. We'll know that we're going to die. So that's an awesome, beautiful thing. For example, my grandpa, he actually threw a party shortly before he passed away and to say his goodbyes. And that was like a common thing way back in the day where the elders would put together a party and just uh, say their final goodbyes. While the other 25%, these guys and gals, they don't see it coming. It happens suddenly. I personally almost became part of this statistic. In ninth grade, I was fooling around with some chemicals, and they went kaboom. It took two years, nine operations, and plenty of stitches for me to get back to, you could say, somewhat normal. So I was very lucky. I went from being almost that 25% to right now into that 75%. And this is where I like to share this one example that all of us could understand. Imagine going to the bathroom and uh, you see this much toilet paper. Well, when you see this much toilet paper, you're able to unroll that thing at 500 miles an hour. Another day, you go to the bathroom, you do your thing, you turn around, and then you see this much toilet paper. And you're like, ooh, I know I'm going to be... So you calculate in your brain, you're thinking, okay, I, tomorrow I'm going to go to the bathroom, so instead of unrolling it at 500 miles an hour, I only unroll it at 100 miles an hour. And then there are those days when you go out somewhere or you eat something, and then the next day it comes knocking at your door, and you're just like, oh, crap, I really got to go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom, you do your thing, and then, and then, and then you turn around and you see this. Whoosh. Yep. You see this right here. That's when you really, really learn the value of a little. So the question is, how do we treat life as if we have almost none left, but also treat it as if we still have plenty of it left? This is where the name of my title comes in, putting this all together in the last few minutes. The 75% toilet paper rule. We're going to see our end coming. Therefore, we will be able to live our life out to go and do things and we'll know when stuff will end so we can plan and live our life to the fullest while not letting it just slip through our fingers and get nothing done with it. How do we treat life like we have little when most of us have a whole lot, even if we're 50, 60, 70, 80 years old? I'd like to share a story with you about this. Many years ago, I had a friend who got cancer, went to the hospital. Uh, he had an operation. He ended up dying and coming back to life. It just happened to be that that day I was in that area and somebody called me and said, hey, this, uh, your friend, he, this is what happened. I'm like, oh, can I visit him in the hospital? And they're like, yeah, go ahead. So I go and visit my friend and I come to his bed and it was just him and myself. And after talking for a few minutes, I ask him, hey, now that you have this opportunity, you just survived this. If you live after this going forward, will you be doing anything different in your life? And he looks at me and with this like excitement, he's like, yes, I'm going to do this, this, and this different. And it was very simple things like spend more time with my kids and start writing more poems and start sharing them with people. And I was like, awesome. So a year later, I'm in the same area, the general area, and I get a phone call again. It was like deja vu and same story. He's sick and I'm in the area. I go visit him again. It's just him and myself there in the room and we're talking, talking, talking. Then towards the end, I ask him, hey, last time the same thing happened, did, uh, did you go after those things that you said you're going to go after? And he looks at me, puts his head down and says, no, I didn't. And I was like, how come? And he's like, just life got in the way. And then I look at him, I'm like, okay, so if you survive going forward, if you live, are you going to do those things? He's like, yes, I'm definitely going to do them this time around. So a year later get a phone call and this time they're like he is not doing fine I go to the same hospital by the time i was living in that area i go to that fifth floor and i stand beside his bed and by this time he could barely he couldn't even talk he was like oh really out of it and then afterwards i asked if i could visit him i asked his uh, wife if i could visit him if he gets better and a week later uh, the following week actually 
I get a phone call, they're like, hey, you can come and visit on such and such a day. So that day comes, I go there, we have some food. And then I, was, I turned around to his wife and said, hey, I'm going to ask him some, some hard questions that him and I were talking about for the last couple of years. And so I just let her know. And she's like, okay. So I turned around to him. I'm like, look, two years ago, you said you were going to do it. You didn't. A year ago, you said you were going to do these things. You didn't. Did you ever get to do these things now that you had a second chance? And he looks at me and he looks down and says, no, I did not. And I asked him, why? Why is that? He's like, I just let life get in the way. The question is, how are we able to treat life as if we have very little, so it's very treated very preciously, but we also at the same time can be peaceful and calm that we still have plenty of it left. How do we do this? Let me show you a few things here. Let me show you a, a magic trick. Here's a magic trick I'd like to show you that will really hit home run with this point. So... See this card right here? If you blink, you just might miss it. One, two, three. Boom. What happened? How did that just occur? And this is where I like to share this very powerful quote. When you change how you look at things, the things we look at change. For example, going back to this the trick. One, two, three, boom. Right? Now, if I do it sideways, check this out. Boom. Let me do it a little further. This is how the trick works. I go one, two, three, boom. Whoop, didn't work out. Hold on a second, hold on. It's one, two, three, boom. See, and what you see is this, right? So when you change how you look at things, so this is in slow motion, boom. But in fast motion or in real life, it looks like this. One, two, three. Sorry, that was a little too slow. One, two, three, boom. That's how it is. When you change how you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. Once you know how the trick is done, you can also achieve the same effect in your life. Once you learn the skill of picking the next life direction, for you, that's going to be like filling up your car with gasoline so that you can actually start getting to places in your life. What is the difference between a vision, having a vision, and having a life direction? Here's where we're all at at some point. We are in a place where we want to get out of and become something different. This is life direction. For example, when I was in high school, I wanted to become a landscape architect. So ninth grade, my life direction that I wanted to achieve next was to become a landscape architect. Then I had the accident and things changed up for me and what I wanted out of life. And by senior year, the only life direction I had at that point was to finish high school and not drop out. That's what I wanted to. So where we begin is relative to where you are in life now. For example, my friend who was in, uh, also my best friend at the ninth grade at that same time, he lived a few towns over. And for him, he was able to get a job at 16 and now he's in his 30s and he's still at that job, which is awesome. So he had a different platform than where I started or somebody who is uh, homeless has their own or somebody who's born to a wealthy family. We all have different starting points, but we all want to get to somewhere next. Now, the difference between a life direction, which is something I want to achieve next versus a vision is how many different things, experiences that you, do you have in your life? For example, you experience something and then you achieved something and you're like, okay, I want to achieve something else. Then the next thing and the next thing. Once you've achieved and experienced enough things in your life, you can look back and say, oh, wow, I experienced all these things and I'd like to achieve dot, dot, dot. That's a vision. To be able to get to that point, to be able to create a vision for yourself, you have to have had enough of life achieved enough life directions in your life to be able to like, okay, here's the vision I'd like to achieve. So for example, for me, my life direction from one point to the next eventually led me to where I'm like, you know what? I'd like to help a lot of people be able to create a life direction for themselves. That was my vision. That's what I wanted to achieve. And this leads us to part two. The first thing that I'd like to share with you is this, that um, when I have conversations with people one-on-one, -on -one, this is how they go. So they're born and the end of their life. This is where they're at right now. We sit down and have a conversation either one-on-one -on -one or on phone call. 
So when we have these conversations, they go from all angles. It's never a linear conversation. I might ask them a question of where were they born or during high school, what did they experience then? Or what kind of drop a big question like uh, what kind of legacy would you like to leave or what was what's the next thing you'd like to experience in your life and all that combined brings it back to now and then we can dive into what their next life direction is so the process uh, can be kind of confusing ish when done one to many so today this is a webinar a lot of people are listening and so it might come off confusing to you so now that we understand that this process is kind of confusing-ish when it's done in a group setting, the question is, why pick a life direction? What's the purpose of doing any of that? Well, let me give you three examples. Have you ever read a book and then you, or you're you supposed to read just a chapter, be it homework or you're reading a book for fun and you start a chapter, you're reading, reading, you're like, oh gosh, when is this thing going to end? And then you finally look and you realize that it's uh, like 10 pages later and all of a sudden that feeling leaves you and you're like, oh, okay, I can do it. It's totally doable. Or have you ever been at a stoplight and you're just standing there and standing there because there's no time or anywhere telling you how much longer it's going to be read. You're just like, you get antsy. You're like, oh, come on, come on. What is this? When is it going to turn green? When is it going to turn green? Or how about when somebody is uh, supposed to pick you up and then you wait there and they don't call you. Like one, I remember one experience where, I called the person they were supposed to meet me at a certain point and then they're not there, they're not there, they're not there. And every passing minute past their arrival time, it just feels like forever. So you're like, oh, come on, when is this going to end? And that's what it's like in life. When we don't have the next direction in life to go after, the next thing we want to go after, we start going around in circles. And when we go around in circles, what's going to happen if I show it to you like in um, represented in a graph, we like this right here we are a lot more likely when we don't have a life direction the outcome to be bummed we're going to feel a lot bummed however when we do have the next life direction that we want to achieve we have a lot more chances to feel like we're actually progressing and getting things done and moving forward in life and not being stuck and running around in circles you know if i was to simplify life it's all about feeling good and there's two basic ways we make ourselves feel good when we focus on ourselves, on me, or when I focus on others. When I focus on me, it's about focusing on getting things. When I focus on others, it's about focusing on giving to others. There's a great tool called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And it's a triangle and is divided into five parts. The first two are focused about getting things for me, uh, about my body, as getting safety, food, shelter, water, and all those things. And then the top three are all about the mind. It's about giving to others. So here's you and here are the other people. When you focus on yourself at the first two levels, you're focusing on, say, for example, if you're hungry, you're going to get a hamburger and you'll be feeling full. Maybe two will be more than enough for you. But once you figure out how to get three, four, 10, 100 hamburgers uh, every time you wanted to eat, all of a sudden, after two hamburgers, you're like, okay, I got to figure out how to start giving to other people. And that's where you go from focusing on yourself, me getting, and then it's about focusing others and about giving to other people. When we're talking about others, other people give us two major things in return. One of them is relationships and the other one is money. And when I'm talking about relationships, they can be... Uh, romantic relationships, family, or friends. It doesn't matter what kind of relationships. That's not something that you can do for yourself. To get into one of those relationships, you have to have other people around you. And the other thing that people give to us is money. We provide them some kind of service. And I mean, you can't make money just sitting in a room. You have to go and do something for somebody else to get money in return. When we pursue relationships for the sake of love, that is for love's sake. But if we start pursuing relationships for because we're feeling lonely, we're actually that means we're pursuing this quote unquote love to get something. So I don't feel lonely. When we're looking toward for other people to make money and we want to provide value, that's about giving something to somebody else and in return you get money. But if we are trying to just get money from people and say for example there's a lot of millionaires who said, I want to make a million bucks. They make a million bucks and then when they make it, they all of a sudden feel lost. So we as humans have to learn how to work with and negotiate with other people.
So once we figured out how to provide for ourselves on the first two levels for our body needs, if we could simplify it like that, then I go to the next level of how do I focus on others? How do I give to others? And that's where we need to learn how to work with people and how to negotiate with people. Which leads me to the next diagram. Again, here's you and here are the others. Say this other person has a problem and then you are able to solve that problem. And when you're able to solve that problem, that's called a solution. So the others have problems. You have the ability to solve that problem. You give the others a solution. And in return, they either give you a thank you or they, if it's a business, they give you money in return. And the solution that we have to offer for people is called value. So the question is, what value do you possess right now? We all have values. Some people might be only as basic as being able to dig a hole or flip burgers. It doesn't matter. For example, when I started out after high school, uh, of my first semester after college, I decided instead of going for programming, I wanted to get really great at construction. So I started out to do uh, sheetrock work. I learned how to do uh, mudding and taping and all that stuff and as the years went by about five six seven years into it I started focusing on bathroom remodeling that was my specialty that's what I focused on that was how I wanted to provide value to others and in return I would get money now we're going into the practical aspect of this webinar question is value what kind of value can you provide for somebody else uh, another way to put it is what am I capable of of doing what am i capable of what kind of service can i provide other people if you're a doctor it's being a doctor if it's a nurse it's caring for somebody if it's a burger flipper it's a food maker there's all sorts of things there is some kind of value that you have the other question that you want to ask yourself is when it, in relation to life direction is what do i want to do so when we're focusing on the value is it's who you are right now Whereas what I want to do is what you want to be in the future. And that's the major question to be focusing on right now. So to take a tally of what kind of value you have will be determined or what direction you take that into will be determined how you answer what do I want to do with my life right now. And there's two ways to answer this question. There's two ways people typically answer this question. One is they openly answer and say, like, say, for example, a child might say, I want to be an astronaut or I want to be a fireman. Most of us answer this question and try to be very realistic. And that's one thing I really want to encourage you or depending on what angle you look at, it, I want to discourage you from doing this. When you're trying to, when right now you're going to be answering, what do I want to do with my life or what do I want to do next in my life? Don't be realistic. Just be open and write down what do I want to do? For example, when I was a ninth grader, I was a student. That's all I was. The next life goal that I wanted, that I set for myself was to become a landscape architect. But then I got hurt and I decided by senior year, that's not what I wanted to do. So then I went from, again, just being a student at, at senior year to saying, okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to travel the world. And so I chose to do construction to be able to provide for myself to be able to travel the world. That was my next life direction. I wanted to travel the world. So I picked construction as the value I wanted to provide. In return, I would be able to do what I wanted to do, which is travel. And this is where it is so easy to get as clear as a blurry picture. Often people will say, well, I'll ask people, okay, what's the next direction would you like to pick in your life after they... Um, Stop trying to be realistic. So typically the answers are like, well, I want financial stability. I want to travel the world. I want to become a speaker, a psychologist. Let's take just a financial stability thing. So many times I had this conversation where people are like, I want financial stability. And I asked the people, the individual, okay, so you want financial stability. What would you have to do to achieve financial stability? The answer would be, well, I want to go to college and I want to learn about what it means to be financially stable. After answering that they'll go to college to learn about being financially stable, I would start digging and asking questions. Well, what does financial stability mean for you? After doing numbers, after spending maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes on figuring out what financial stability means for them, they're like, well, I would need to start making 1500 bucks a month. 
So I say, okay, so what are your current skills to be able to achieve 1500 bucks a month, which is just under $10 an hour, but they're not aware of that. So you're like, okay, so what are your current skills right now? Once they say, okay, I'm able to do this or this type of programming for cars. It's like, okay, so you can become a car mechanic uh, from the electronics standpoint. The next question is, okay, what kind of jobs are actually available to you? And then they say, well, I could get this, 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 or this job. And the following question, the follow up question is, what price are you willing to pay to achieve the next life direction? You see, although the initial question was answered, what do you want to, what's your next life direction? Like, well, I want financial stability. It's as clear as hitting a target like this. So let's say this black box right here is a big target and you're shooting a bow towards it. When you say I want financial stability, that's like the equivalent of aiming at this box and hitting it and then feeling not good about it. The truth is, if you hit this box, financial stability, you're flipping burgers at 10 bucks an hour, you're achieving your 1500 bucks a month if you work 40 hours a week. But that does not produce that, that uh, forward feeling of forward momentum in life. We need to be able to start actually create a life direction. We need to get really down and nitty gritty of what exactly do you want to achieve within this. So when somebody says financial stability, that's the equivalent of putting a box and saying, well, if you hit it, you hit it, you're good. That doesn't make us feel good. We need to do something more. We need to take the next step and then even more so create a red dot, which we can aim for. You see, when we're asking or saying to ourselves, I want financial stability, we got this big black box, we're never going to feel good even if we hit it every single time. As long as we hit it at any spot, it's good. But the way we think, the way our minds are wired is we need to have a target. And once we have that little red dot, that little center dot that we're actually going after, and it doesn't matter where this dot is, it could be in the center, it could be a top right corner, left corner. Once we have that little small dot, we can start asking ourselves, very very practical questions like okay who do i know or who do i need to talk to what is my actual next step now who like if you're like i need to talk to this person then it's like okay i need to call them then you set up the call and you make the call that's the difference between saying okay financial stability then once you create a target you are a lot more likely if you remember that uh, scale we're a lot more likely to feel like we're moving forward and achieving something in our life to show it in a different way here is you, here's your life, and this is right now, you're that green person. Often when we say, okay, I, my life direction is financial stability. Well, that's not an actual life direction. If you say that financial stability is the thing that I want to reach, this is what your life is going to look like. Uh, for example, this uh, individual who said I wanted to go to college, they would take a big dip and they would have to pay so much money and eventually they'd figure out how to become financially stable. A life direction is having something that you actually will be able to achieve and you know you've achieved it. When you create a life direction, you are not going to feel like, oh, I don't know what to do next. A life direction actually helps you. These black dots right here are the goals that you need to, to accomplish to achieve your life direction. To recap today's conversation, here's you initially right now or somebody that you might be talking to and they're like, okay, I don't know what direction I'm going in. So when they pick a life direction for themselves, they're able to have these goals that they want to achieve. As they achieve more and more and more of their life, next life direction, they'll eventually get to the point where they're like, oh, I know what I want to do with my life. I have a big, this, this vision that I want to achieve. Like for me, it's to help as many people learn how to have this skill set. When you have enough experiences to look back towards, you'll be able to look ahead into a future that does not yet exist and say, this is what I want to achieve that's beyond my sight line right now. Something that I can't see that's like nearly impossible for me to do or I don't know how it's going to be done. When we are able to create the next life direction and achieve it and then create another life direction and achieve it more and more and more, more, eventually we go from creating a life direction to creating a vision that will take us a lot further and longer, which will help us feel a lot more hopeful and clear about the future rather than feeling bummed and confused. So if you're here at this uh, red, you're the little red guy or gal right now, and you try to create a vision for yourself, you're going to be suffering a lot. 
The next thing that you need to do is be able to create a life direction. And once you have a life direction, the goals will come out of the woodwork and you'll be like, okay, I need to do this, 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 this. And just like these black dots, you'll know exactly what you need to do. And once you achieve that next life direction, you know you got there. And that from that point on, you're like, okay, here is what I need to do next. So I hope this was very helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, this wraps up the training and teaching portion of the call. And now I would like to open it up to you and say, okay, what kind of questions do you have today?